Hello everybody and welcome uh, to the Film Punk channel, the uh, cheap ass Film Punk channel. I'm dispensing of the hat today because it's 25 degrees here which is about the mid 70s which for rainy England is actually really really bloody warm. I want to tell you the story today of the film Amos 3.5 and how it came to be and I'll try and do it with a degree of brevity not displayed on the first take of this video that went into 10 minutes before I'd got going. Welcome to the behind the scenes for the second time <laughs> of the making of the film. We are outside in a field full of sheep. We need to get a shot of me walking toward the glorious sunset, which is rapidly going away. <laughs> so first things first, location. I managed to get a location for no money in exchange for creating a promotional video for the owner. I had just been randomly emailing people who owned nice things and said, would you like a promo video if I can use your location for free? And somebody said yes. Hurrah! So we got a location. Right. When you come in through the outside door, which you will have just seen, the inside of that door will be this door. Behind it, however, is a fridge. This door does go outside, but it's not as pretty as the main ornate door. And we've got to uh, move the fridge outside if we need to, just to allow them in. And I think she's going to empty it for us. So, uh, yeah. Um, so then they're going to come in here. This is where she was originally supposed to be uh, playing with a doll on the mantelpiece, but there isn't one. However, I was thinking that we might get her doing something weird like this. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> okay, so then, coming in here, they have a little conversation here, and this is where they do their little waltz dance in the blocking. So we've got the nice dining table here, so we get shots this way. We've got quite a bit of light coming in. And then they're going to head up these stairs. I'll do this all for you in real time. They're going to come up these stairs. I'll just show you down. There's a landing. Okay, they're going to come up here. There's a fox. There's a bird. More birds. Grouse. Look at the stuff. Oh, he's angry. All right. And then this is the corridor. Right. We've got one door, and then this is the second door. That means more door. And then in here is the room that we're filming in, which. I've got to come earlier and dismantle this bed and move it down the corridor somewhere. So we'll just have this space here. So that's your ceiling, which is just about high enough for me to touch. So I'm guessing about seven foot. We've got a little wardrobe space there. We can probably just empty that and leave it as be. I was thinking of cove lighting around here. Maybe uh, we've got a radiator there. We could do a cove that way. But I think if we can keep it along that wall, even if it turns into more of a panel, that means that the, t the chair is going to be over here with the bad guy. And Josh's bag is going to be down here. And he's going to be going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards as the exorcism carries on. Uh, there's a lamp here that we can use for motivated light. Obviously, we've got the outside. When it's dark, we can then show the window later on and just get them pacing backwards and forwards and what have you just to, you know... Um, what's it called? Except that there's a window there and show that there is one. Uh, but I think generally we'll be avoiding it. So here is the room. I thought I'd do video instead of lots of photos. There you go. It's very nice. Uh, there's this big blanket box here as well, which we might have to move to one side. We're going to be tight for space, but it was the only room that we'd got available that uh, was available, really. Essentially, the rest were all bedrooms or private use only type thing but there are lots of books here which is cool because i've got a prop book that's going to fly at the priest's head but i think i'm probably going to have it over here somewhere on, on the floor because i'm trying not to get that side of the room in although i will see what you think likewise obviously if there's a cove light here you're not going to be able to get to that side so we could just move a little table and then we're going to get a chair an ornate chair for him to sit on there so then that is it so then the priest does his little seen somewhere on this floor around here is where she uh, he uh, she transfers into him and he becomes satana and then he's gonna get out of here 
wish there was a bit more light for you. There you go. And then he's going to basically reverse the whole thing. Come across here. Around. And he's going to descend. Like this. Boom, 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 boom. Turn, turn, turn. And then he's going to exit through that door. Which will be the ornate door when you get to the other side of it. Through the magic of television. And there is your dining room. Boop. So we didn't have a story or anything else, however. So I wrote a script and uh, it was it was OK. It had some issues. Uh, we needed a child actor to be in it. And we eventually just gave up on the concept of getting a child involved because the logistics were just not worth the effort. So I wrote a second script and the second script was all right. No children involved. No problems at all. So we've got a location. We've got a script. So I hunt around, put some adverts out, and I get a cinematographer on board, and I get a sound person on board, and a few other people express some interest. We start casting, and we get our main lead actor, uh, acting named Jackson Hayes. Uh, you can find him on YouTube as Josh, 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 blah, 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 Josh Strife Hayes, teeth back in. Uh, we also had Sheridan Sinclair in it, who you've probably seen on some of my other little videos. He's done some work with me recently, and actually as recently as this week on my new film, Void, coming very soon. So we cast everybody. We had quite a lot of interest because we're filming this in the middle of a global pandemic. And a lot of people were sat on their hands very, very bored. And as soon as somebody came up and said, I'm filming, everybody seemed to jump on it. And I had more choice than I could possibly know what to do with. So the total budget for this film, while we're talking about money, I think in the end, between the costumes that I actually bought and food and things, probably, probably about a hundred pounds, about $150 in total, something like that maybe. Couldn't have been much more than that. So pretty, pretty much zero. So we've got a location, we get a crew, we got a cinematographer, gaffer, sound man, uh, boom operator, first AC, a couple of people just helping out here and there. And we, we got quite a lot of uh, people involved, uh, all told. And some people were only on certain locations. We had a second AC and so on and so forth. So it's, it's good. We were doing really well. For no money, we were doing quite well. So the first thing I started doing at that point, after I'd cast it and got my crew in order, is I started creating sort of mood boards. So I've got some of those. Then I came up with color palettes for the uh, individual characters. And then I started seeking out the uh, costumes because obviously I need some priest costumes, some cardinal costumes and so on to go in with the story. Then we needed some uh, props, uh, one of which I made, which I should have brought in with me, which is a sort of a, a fake Bible that was supposed to fly across the room and whack the priest with it. Uh, but we ended up not using it anyway, but it is actually in the film. It just doesn't go anywhere. But I've still got it and I've used it since for other things. Never mind what. Next up, I came up with the shot list and included in the shot list, I also created a sounds list because I knew there were certain sounds that I really did need to get. So I made a sound list as well. Then I came up with some very curious blocking techniques uh, regarding the uh, two main characters or the, sort of the two first characters, should I say, who appear in the film, which is uh, Father Francis and the uh, lady of the house, uh, Sarah. And the idea was is that they were supposed to be rotating around each other with the blocking, doing a waltz. And it was supposed to be paced in a very waltz-like manner. And they were moving around the house, constantly rotating, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it was awesome, except, of course, I didn't account for the width of the uh, landing and the stairs and anything, in fact. Uh, so that sort of went out the window. We got a couple of rotations in by the time they got to the uh, door where they're going for the main element of the film. But uh, it would have been lovely to get that done, but I completely fluffed the uh, dimensions of the, uh, of the landing. I didn't think about it at all when I came up with the blocking concept. Uh, there you go. The next thing I did was the production schedule, came up with a schedule so I could tell everybody when and where we were filming it and what we were going to do and in what order. There were certain shots that 
must be filmed at certain times, some outdoor shots. Duvetined all the windows and so on, uh, so we were shooting as if it was nighttime indoors anyway. But we did have a couple of shots that were set at dusk. So handy dandy compass app on my phone, where's the sun going to be, what time on this date in the future, and planned that shot and sure enough, uh, <laughs> Uh, in a very health and safety conscious way, a bunch of us jumped in the back of a regular saloon car with a camera uh, and filmed a priest walking up a street and then off over a hill. And it looked really not bad, all things considered. So that brings us to sort of filming. So we, we filmed the first couple of scenes in the September of 2020. Uh, the first one was in a, uh, aban not abandoned, a, a ruined uh, monastery, which we passed off as the Vatican. And I think it looked kind of okay. Uh, you know, it's sort of sandstone, worked quite well. Uh, the second location was a, um, a an industrial estate. And I looked through every single business on the industrial estate to find out their operating hours. So I wanted to find a place where we were not going to get disturbed or get run over. So it took quite a bit of searching, quite a few hours in fact. And I found a street. We went there and we filmed this, uh, this particular scene where the... Uh, main uh, antagonist, protagonist, you'll have to watch the film to find out which he is, uh, he has run over uh, a woman while drunk driving. Uh, he goes on to then kick her in the head rather than help her and then get back in his drunk mobile and drive off jolly form. And uh, yeah, we filmed that on a little industrial estate and that went quite well. Ap apart from a lorry decided to park, just a truck if you're American, just in exactly where we wanted to film. So we had to move her a little bit. The other issue we had to work around is our lead actor can't actually drive. So we had to fake being in America, drive on the right hand side of the road and when he gets in the car and you can look on the film yourself, there's a small light goes on which is actually a little aperture MC light, one of these little ditty things. And I'm actually in the driver's seat really low down like this, driving almost blind down an industrial estate. There's nobody there so it's quite good. And uh, so, yeah, because he had to pretend that he was driving because he couldn't actually drive. But that was fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and action. Then we come to the main two uh, filming days, uh, which brought about a number of uh, things to, to think about, uh, not least of which food. <clears throat> so we made all of the food ourselves at home and we packed it because it was COVID. Everybody's meal was um, ordered beforehand. We I went through all the allergy checks and so on, make sure it was fine. Then we sterilized everything and we pre-packed every meal individually in uh, recyclable boxes. Uh, every item of food and packaging that we used on set was 100% recycled and recycled again afterwards. So we were about the most eco-friendly film set that I've ever been on, before or since. Action. When did it start? He's been ranting in a language I don't understand for hours. He's never been a well man, I mean. So we got the lunches, we counted up everybody who was there, all the cast, all the crew, brilliant. Everybody's on site, we start filming, it's all going great. Ah, then, then, the gaffer, he was brilliant. Went out, lit this massive big house, lit a moat, lit a moat and a house with lights that just a few of us had brought. Fantastic. Except, of course, he was off busy gaffering all the time. And, well, there's a lesson to be learned here for everybody who is going to go and film on a location in someone's house. The lady who owns the house said, oh, do you mind if I have one of these meals? And I went, oh, well, we've got one left, apparently. Yes, sure, help yourself to that. And uh, so she tucked in to this rather nutritious, uh, balanced meal that we gave. Not pizza, they were wraps, actually, but they were all very... Uh, well thought out in terms of nutritional content to keep people going. And then just after we'd finished, the gaffer turned up and said, where's mine? Where's my dinner? 
Uh, so yeah, we gave him as much w as we could from what we could gather, but we gave away the gaffer's dinner. Sorry, Lewis, we gave your dinner away. We didn't mean to, we thought that we'd got a spare one, but he was missing all the time. It's not our fault totally, he was missing all the time. He was working, but missing. Action. Tell me, what is his name? It's Peter, my father. This is usually Father Connor's area, but we were called urgently to the Vatican this morning. When did it start? He's been ranting in a language I'm just going to And cool. So we filmed and it was a really good laugh. There's lots and lots of BTS from this, which I'm sure I will have interspersed to this video with a bit of luck. <laughs> that is going in the book over there. <laughs> you want to push? Rolling reset, please! Rolling reset. We have bloopers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sheridan is always a good laugh to have on set. The enemy. <laughs> Cunt. And swears constantly as soon as the cameras uh, stop or not stop in the BTS way. Um, we had elements of the script which were in Latin. Are you filming? Am I? Are you filming? Am I filming now? Yes. No, no, I'm not filming. It's a shame because I nearly nailed the Latin and I need proof that I did. Crux satra sit mihi lux nuquam draco si mihi dux vada retro satan. I was on my phone and I thought that in the future there's got to be exorcism apps. Where's that? <laughs> 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 I just stick the app and play Ex in the room with you. Yeah. <laughs> and so I thought, you know what, I'll be kind to him. I'll give him his satanic prayer in English. I translated it, L lovely, gave it to him, he thought it wasn't authentic enough. So he took it upon himself to get the original Latin and memorise that. Uh, yep, crux sacra sed mihi lux, nuquam draco si mihi dux, vada retro satana, nuquam suadi mi havana, sunt mala qui libas ipse venena vivas. Well, proteste temprioris, beste omnem exercet in conspecto eos. Was you recording? Yeah, it was. Yeah, he has actually memorized actual satanic uh, prayers in Latin. I actually made some up on my original one. He went a bit method and got some actual satanic ones. Um, Josh is actually reading uh, what I could find online to be the actual rites of an exorcism as well. In the room that the most haunted TV show actually visited once, because it's apparently the most haunted room in this already haunted house, which we didn't really know at the time. We knew that the house had been on the show, but we didn't know it was the room that we were filming in. So in the most haunted show, they were filming in this room, looking for ghosts, and here's us, a year or so later, reciting satanic prayers there, and exorcism rites. It was awesome. And uh, no ghosts. No ghosts appeared at all, which... It's a recurring theme for skeptics. Never see the ghosts. Always look, never see them. Day two came along, started around about midday on that one because we knew we were going to go into the night. Like that, and then, and then right. go in. Yeah, and then go in for the kill. Yeah. Okay, action. Do a couple of strokes and then decide that. I'll go in. Writing. <laughs> <laughs> one finger as well. Only one finger. Keep rolling. Keep rolling. Start again. Reset. Two two strokes underneath. You want to go right? Two in. yeah. Two strokes underneath and one finger right in. But put your finger there and yeah. push it all the way. In. This is fake. I, I it's know, clear. I got, I got that. Yeah. I just, I don't know. It still oh, looks mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ready and action. Well, Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, and cut. We did some remaining scenes inside. Sheridan was wrapped at the end of day one. And so the remaining scenes were just uh, Josh arriving, interacting with uh, Catherine, and then the exterior scenes of him arriving and then leaving later on. The exterior scenes, as I mentioned earlier with the gaffer, in required lighting this uh, sort of C-shaped stately home. Half of it's in ruin, half of it is renovated. Uh, but he lit it all with, with the lights that we'd brought with us and the, what he'd brought with him. And uh, we, were not, we didn't have big lights. They were, they were fairly modest lights. And uh, he did really, really well. And we, uh, well, we, uh, this is a royal we. He made it look really, really nice. And that is awesome. And we got my fog machine and we fogged a moat. Three, two, one, pump the machine. What if you can? Yeah. Ready? Cut. Action. Sorry. I was, still, I was still hearing that. I didn't know. Got... With a little bridge over it, as you do, which looked fantastic. I hope it can be seen on the actual film itself. So, yeah, that's essentially the filming done. And then we sent it off to about 30 festivals. Um, but then it turns out that everybody was bored during covid and everybody made loads of films and flooded the festivals and they'd got four times as many entries as they'd normally got which might excuse the fact that it didn't really do very well at festivals there were a few issues with it and yeah some pacing issues and a couple of scenes i would have liked to have added but all in all i'm still very pleased with what we made because we filmed this in two days we filmed a couple of very small scenes elsewhere but we filmed the majority of it in two days in total, I think there was about 14 people on location. I think I remember making 14 dinners. It should have been 15, but I think I remember making 14. So it was a little bit of a flop when it came to festivals. It got one nomination for Best Actor, but we didn't win. And another nomination that, that didn't turn into anything. I think that was just a general selection to play at an online festival. But that is the story of... Amos 3.5 and how it came to be and where it is now and you can go and watch it on the channel link up here somewhere and Yeah, it was a fantastic experience. It was the first film I'd made with a crew Everything else prior to that was basically just me fanning about with a camera and a tripod and not doing very well at any of it So it was it was a learning curve a big learning curve I have a background in project management, so I think I organised it quite well. Everything ran reasonably according to time. We went over by about an hour or so on the second night just to get things finished. But generally, I think it went quite well, apart from giving away the gaffer's dinner. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I've been meaning to make this video for over a year, and I finally made one, so there you go. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to be making some more soon. Remember, like if you like and subscribe if you don't. Now, go away. It's really warm. It's 75 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is very warm for England. And we're not used to it. I need to sit down.